Oh. Most non-Indians' first-hand experiences with reservations consist of either a visit to a casino or possibly attending a powwow. Upscale resorts, golf courses, restaurants, and Vegas-style gambling halls are all obvious signs of an influx of money into these communities. But you need to look closer and spend some time with people who live and work there to find answers to the question of how has life changed because of gaming money. Sharon Schmeichel and I set out to find out how casino revenues have impacted life for Indian people with regard to jobs, housing, education, health care, tribal government, self-sufficiency, social problems, and cultural restoration. We asked Ojibwe and Dakota people on reservations all over the state, as well as in the Twin Cities urban community, to share their perspectives. Here's a sample of what we heard. I remember in 1969, we, when, we, when I moved here, um, we lived in a small trailer, uh, and we, we didn't have running water at the time. We had an outhouse. When I was going to school, high school, I, our dropout rates were 95% and 100%. So yes, we have, we have come a long way. Still over half of the Native American children in, under the age of five in Minnesota are in poverty. Uh, and so the fact that there are profitable casinos has not uh, eliminated poverty. Gaming revenue funded these types of things. You see the kids have somewhere to be during the day when school gets out and after school. When we negotiated treaties, the United States gave us nothing. Tribal governments are sovereign and independent nations. Uh, we recognize that, and it's also the premise of Indian gaming in Minnesota. If you look at our treaties, and we were promised education, we were promised health care, we were promised, well, we were promised a lot of things, and they just haven't been uh, fulfilled. But I also remember there was a lot of elders cautioning us about the, the, the casinos, that it would create greed, that it would create strife, that it would break, you know, because you're dealing with money. And that's a new system that that's a new system to a lot of American Indians in terms of financial literacy. We've been good stewards of these resources and putting them where they have the most need, and in into the well-being of our community members. Right now, they're dependent on the government up there. They're dependent on the tribe to do things for them, build them houses, get them jobs. You know. Sometimes you have to put it back on the individual. I think one of the things Native people need to know is what it really is going to take to invest in our communities. It may not necessarily just be a program or a building or a new facility, but what they have to look at is investing in our people. The tribe helped me out with my education and uh, I ended up getting two degrees, one in human services and my other degree was in uh, business management. Everybody thinks that, well, if you're self-sufficient, you don't need government funds anymore. That's not the point. The, the point is using government funds is like any county, um, city, municipality, they all use government funds. I know some people, even in my own family, you know, that have a, that, you know, have a problem with gambling, but the benefits from gaming um, far outweigh the problems that, that it brought to the reservation because uh, life is so much better, you know, with gaming.